Good evening. Welcome to a Saturday session of Cat Space in this Samba podcast tonight. My name is Cat. This is Buckets, and with us is Leon. Good evening. How are you? Quite sad, actually. Uh, viewers, subscribers, new ones, and current, welcome. Tonight we mourn the loss of people who left us way too early, twenty years ago today, and the tragedy that struck. September 11th, 2001. May those that left us way too early rest in peace. May their light may never be extinguished from our lives, our thoughts, our prayers, and our minds. Condolences to the families and friends of loved ones from the Pentagon to the Twin Towers to the field. It's just it feels like it was just yesterday that we were all witnessing this horrific ordeal. So on behalf of myself and Buckets and Leon and Horsey, Cat Space would like to say our condolences and may they rest in eternal light and peace. Good evening. How are you? Okay. Oh, I knew this, I knew this day was going to come, but I didn't, it's, it, it just, it really did seem like, you know, wow, it's, has it been 20 years now? I can't believe it has been 20 years this day. I and mean, it, it really does feel like, yeah, even though it's, like I said, even though it's been 20 years, but it really still feels like yesterday, the fact that it's so fresh in everyone's minds. Obviously, it's going to be fresh in everyone's minds tonight. There's going to be specials all over the free day networks. Uh, obviously, you know, rem- uh, remembering what had happened. It. You're right. It does feel like yesterday that this occurred. And the first question I have is, where were you when this, where were you when this unfolded? Twenty years. I was actually, I, to be honest, I was in, I was in bed, right? But uh, my brother woke me up. Uh, obviously I was 21 at the time. I, I, okay. Just for the record, 40, I'm 41 now. Okay. Just for the record, but I was 21, right? And my brother woke me up. It would have been, oh, gee, I, don't, I can't remember. It would have been after 11, it would have been after 11 p.m., I think, or something along those lines. And we were watching Sky News, and we saw um, the planes. We saw we, we saw the World Trade Center on fire, right? And I'm thinking, okay, all right, it's on fire because you're only half awake and half thinking when everything's going on, when you're just waking up. I thought it was just like a fire or something at the time. And and I'm thinking to myself, that's not good because how are they going to get, you know, how is how are they going to get fireys up to that building? You no, know, that at that height, just to try and put a fire out. And then my brother had told me that a plane had had hit the building. I was like, You're kidding. Right. I couldn't I couldn't picture it in my head that that could ever happen. And then I think it was shortly afterwards, there was, uh, we saw a plane. I think it was the second, I'm not sure if it was the second plane or the first plane, but we saw a plane going, hitting the building. And the first thing that was going through my mind was, my God, this is where World War Three starts. I don't mean to try and sensationalize. This is exactly my thoughts at whatever time it was. And when I, when that footage came through and then later on, and then it was shortly afterwards, um, we heard that the Pentagon had been attacked. And but then shortly after that, we heard of a plane going down in Pennsylvania. I was like, who, what, who could do something like this? Why? What was the point? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I remember I was in school actually, and this was the year that I was just about to graduate in Holy Cross. And I was doing HSC. Um, and I remember I was in doing English class at the time. I had two classes. I had English and history was right afterwards. And uh, we were doing in English. And um Basically, what happened was it was it was it was an interesting response because it was like we saw the first plane hit, right, and then that was that was like crazy, 
And I, I remember my teacher was like, oh, don't worry, you guys have got a HSC coming up, concentrate on, co concentrate on that. And I remember one of my, my classmates basically said, how can you be concentrating on the HSC when this stuff is happening right now? And, um, and then my, my English teacher just got to the point where he's like, okay, fine. And she took out the um, television and we watched, um, you know, the September 11th planes hit. And then we saw the second one hit. And then that was, that was crazy. And we thought, hang on, are they repeating this? Is this just a repeat of the same thing? But it was a second plane. And that was like, oh, wow, that is, that is crazy. Um, and then it was, it was interesting because there were, you could hear the, the sirens and everything like that. And you could also see this like one guy jumping out of a window because he didn't want to be. I saw that. There. And I, I went to history class the next, next um, period. And I remember my history teacher made us look at the same thing because this is, this is like modern history. And he was saying, um, okay, George did Bush did his speech or whatever. He's telling himself that, telling everyone that he's like the beacon and hope or whatever. Um, and I remember that my history teacher said, okay, they're going to use this war um, as, or this incident as a way to basically get rid of all of America's smaller enemies um, that they need to just get rid of for the hell of it. And that's exactly what they did. Only they called it instead of um, a particular war on a country, they called it the war on terrorism. And I, I remember it. That's, that was the beginning of the war on terror. Yeah. So, and there, there was also other, other comments like that were made, like I was saying, this is crazy because only this, excuse my language, only this shit happens in New York because this is the kind of things that you see um, on movies. Like, like there's, there's an exact thing on Con Air where they actually do do this, but they crash in, they use a plane and, and crash into a casino. And everyone well, that was that was back in 1997 or something, wasn't it? That yeah, was, so, that was so 97. Every, so everyone kind of assumed that this was kind of like pretty Hollywood stuff, right? Um, yeah, I thought it was a movie. I, yeah. Like you, I thought it was a movie, and then when I heard um, that all the free to air networks they weren't covering their own stuff, they were covering this. So like it was the only thing know, on television. Yeah, exactly. That it could be the only one thing in this world, and that's it right there. Hmm. Um. <laughs> I was speechless. I was, and then, and then I was shortly after, shortly after we, oh, shortly after the, um, uh, all those planes here, then the trade centers came down. I mean, you could not have a worse day than this. And then to see that live, I don't know. That's that freaked the, don't get me wrong. That freaked the hell out of me. I was like, this can't be. I thought this was, I honestly, at first I thought this was an actual fire. Then I thought it was a movie, and then it's just, and it was and it was as real as it gets. Actually, do you know what mm. else? I, I sorry, do you know what else I remember is the fact that um, do you know how you have those graduation photos and stuff like that of of your year and, and stuff like that? Um, well, we had all that of the students that did stuff at school or, or whatever. But I do remember that one of the graduation photos that we had was a picture of September eleventh. Um, that we were the graduating uh, year that experienced September 11th. And that that image would just never go away and we would never forget that. And the fact uh, that you were doing your your year, your, well, your uh, yeah. end of year exams oh. during that is just unbelievable. That unbelievable. Yeah, uh, absolutely. What I'm about you? What about you, Kat? What was your experience when this was unfolding? What, what, what were you doing? Where were you? Um, I was very much like you. I was at home. In my bedroom i'm not sure if it was a weekday or a weekend i can't remember and I it was, was a weekday for sure it was a weekday okay so i was in my room and i was watching tv i couldn't sleep and then all of a sudden you see this breaking news live from new york and then the newsreader was talking and then all of a sudden you see a plane hit the first world world trade center and people screaming and crying and and running and debris everywhere and smoke and inhalation. And I remember thinking, oh my God, is this a movie? This has to be a movie. Maybe they're creating a movie, these people are extras. But 
I was shocked and heartbroken when the second one hit and they both tumbled and you're seeing people, you know, jumping out of windows, committing suicide and, you know, getting trapped under the rubble and dust everywhere and whatnot. I just remember, my God, this has to be a movie of some sort, but it wasn't, it was real life. And it was, I remember my mom walking in, asked, because I turned it right up and my mom walking in saying, can you please turn that down and go to sleep? And I couldn't, I was just with the remote control in my hand. I could not turn it down for the life of me. And I sat there and I just broke down. I was just like, what in God's name is happening? Why is it happening? I just, I, I can't fathom to this day. I was in my room thinking this had to be some sort of a movie, but it wasn't, it was real life. It was horrific seeing people jump out of windows, people trying to run out of the World Trade Centers when it hit the Pentagon, when it hit in Pennsylvania in the field. I mean, mm. There was another thing, actually. It was almost apocalyptic. It was as if it was end of the world, apocalyptic nightmare. And, you know, it, it brings out in your ears, it brings out in your head, and it changes it changes you personally because it affects, it affected the world. It affects the way you think about the world. And that, for me, was just, I could cry still. I'm, I'm tearing up thinking about it because, to this day, I can't fathom, like, all I can think about is what in God's world. Uh, what I was about to say was that um, when people, basically, when the first plane hit, both people from both towers would have left because it would have been like a fire emergency, right? And then after they found that the second tower hadn't been hit or there was no damage, fire damage or whatever, they would have basically called those people up and said oh don't worry it's the, the other tower don't worry about it you can come back to work which means that if they went up back upstairs into work and it got burnt again all they would have had to do is just stay outside for an extra long lunch break and they would have lived but the thing is right that's the other thing the now. thing is when those when those planes hit those towers those people died immediately in the plane and in the in the offices they died immediately people who may have been in the escalators, they would have died immediately, and it just what tumbled. a fireball! Yeah, I, when I when I saw that second plane hit, the first thing you see that explodes, right, was the back of the plane. Yeah, you you really, uh, I don't know if you've seen stills and stuff like that, but that was one of the first. I, actually, you know what? There was two parts of it that was exploded straight away. That was the front and the rear of the plane. Mm. They both exploded simultaneously. So it was like. It really does make you think of hug your friends, hug your family, tell them you love them. Don't go a day without telling them how much they mean to you and that you love them and care about them, cherish them, be there. Like life is short. And when that happened, people became quite angry and petrified. It just goes to show that this world that we live in is not peaceful. It's dark. It's cruel. It's cold. It's, scary and every day i thank god i'm alive and every day we should tell our families and friends how much they mean to us and how much we love them yeah i, I mean i i reckon those people that that would have gotten up would have just seen it as hey it's a really sunny day but i'm going to work or whatever you know would have been nice to them unbeknownst to them would have just kissed their families goodbye sent their kids to school done For the all last the, time yeah d- done all the normal family stuff and then find out that, then you know, the next day um, they've lost family members. It, it would have been absolutely devastating. I mean, it's not like it was a cold winter's day, right? It was it was a sunny, bright, beautiful day when this happened. You know, it was done in plain sight. It, it's disgusting, really. Absolutely disgusting. My next question to both of you is, what was your instant reaction the following day? Leon. Obviously, that it that was one of those major events that really did change me. Right, I was, I remember walking down the driveway, and I don't know how, I don't know why, but it just felt different. It was just one step at a time, but it was, I don't know, it just it felt different. Like this is not the world that I'm used to, but at the same time, it was the same driveway, and I walk up and down all the time, but this felt different. I mean, I don't know. You could have felt a. I, I reckon 
outside, because I reckon everybody would have still been watching the coverage of that. You could have heard a pin drop where I live. And I live in a, and I lived um, in obviously West Sydney, the metropolitan area, one of the ma- main areas of the Mount Druid area. And that area, you know how it gets really busy. But I can tell you where I was, you could have heard a pin drop. That's how quiet it was. It was eerie. It was like a ghost town. That's what it felt like. And that's what it felt like to me. Do you know what? Uh, do you know the funny thing about this is the fact that I remember in around about year nine or year, year 10, I actually wanted to leave school and I wanted to leave school and join the army. Right. And my mom didn't let me join um, because she wanted me to f- finish my high school st- uh, by uh, year 10. Um, and she didn't want me leaving school and whatever. Um, and also my grades went up to scratch as well, because I think you need 57.5 in order to join the army. But I remember just thinking that if I had basically left and actually joined the army in year 10, um, then by September 11th of that year, I would have been shift off to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, and I remember just thinking, wow. And I actually had a nightmare about it as well. I remember, I remember thinking, having to that anxiety of having to shoot people if I was ever called up. Um, so I'm thankful that I actually finished um, my schooling because if I didn't, I would have been in the army, um, you know, fighting in um, a war that was largely oil based. Um, but yeah, that's that's that was that was one of the things I actually remember. The other thing I actually remember was um, it was like the the aftermath of it, which was should we really be going to um, Iraq? Why if if basically the people on the plane who were thought to be from Afghanistan, why are we going to? Why are we invading Iraq? This makes no literally no sense. Why are we? Why are we invading Iraq? So that's what didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, the, the response was the response was handled like a dog's breakfast. Let's not kid ourselves. So that was about two thousand three when the uh, the decision was made to go after these people, and they were going. The original uh, belief was they were going on the wars of terrorism, right? No, uh, the war on terrorism, and for some reason that shifted. It shifted from the war on terrorism to war in Iraq. Uh, to chemical weapons or was it was it, chemi- was it weapons yeah, of mass destruction that was yeah that's was. right and they're trying to prove that iraq had mobile weapons of mass destruction for which they found none and iraq- no, that's, that's what that's what i mean it was handled like a dog's breakfast if we'd stayed on the war on terrorism that would have been it we would have been in this war of terrorism and none of this uh cluster would have um, would have eventuated because we should have just stayed on the one we should have just stayed on the weapons of mass uh, not the weapons of mass destruction we was, should have stayed on the war on terrorism but then they decided to shift it and call it uh, um, uh, it's the war in Iraq weapons of mass destruction they they, well, they went from war on terrorism to weapons of mass destruction they found no weapons of mass destruction and it ended up ended up uh, really uh, putting a dampener on what they were trying to do. It, it was actually quite crazy because I, I remember just thinking, like, um, apart from America, Afghanistan's biggest enemy was actually Iraq. So why go to war against Iraq? It, it, that made no, literally no sense to me. Why, why would you want to go get a war against Iraq um, when, the, when bin Laden is hated by Saddam Hussein? So um, again, it, it, it just it just seemed like they were using um, September 11th as a reason to basically invade any country that they wanted to, and I felt that it was a bit selfish, to be honest. I mean, my my instant reaction was, as I said before, what in God's world is happening? Why is it happening? Like, it, it's just one of those moments where. You wish you could close your eyes, lie in the bed and fall asleep and wake up thinking this is all a bad nightmare. This is all a bad dream. I'm just in a dream. When I wake up, everything will be normal. But no, the remote control stays in your hand. TV's up on loud. And you have Channel 7, 9 and 10. And then you have BBC. And then you have 
you know, all the cable TVs and everything's just silent and it's all you see over and over and over again and live coverage and press conferences. And at the time, I think uh, George Bush was was um, president. the president of the United States then. and yes he, uh, yes, he was the president at that point. And then we were waiting on his, you know, on his uh, on his live press coverage. And he had Bill Clinton and his wife. His, their daughter was actually in New York the day that happened. Um, so what, what, what Didn't uh, George W. Bush visit a school just that day when all this stuff was starting, yes. to, was yes, starting yes, to happen? Was. Next thing you know, he was told about what was going on. And he had to leave. He had to the abruptly, yeah, that's it. He had to abruptly leave there go to right directly to the White House and find out what the hell just happened. And by the way, just for the record, I think we're probably about four hours away from the moment all this stuff started to unfurl. So it's about 6.50 p.m. here. It's currently 4.50 a.m. in New York right now. So I think that they, they, they will all wake up soon, you know, in, in a somber uh, you know, with what's going on now in our world, oh, that, they'll be they'll they'll be on ground zero. They'll be at ground zero. They'll be yeah. they'll be absolutely chockers on ground zero. You know, just remembering what had happened twenty years ago. I, I wish we have, I wish we could have that moment where right now in this podcast, where we could do a bit of a live stream to America to watch ground zero and to watch people coming up and paying their respects and just staying silent for a moment. You know, I wish we could have that moment where we can reflect and, you know, sort of feel what they're feeling. And, you know, it, it's just, I wish we could have that pivotal moment of just minute silence and watch Ground Zero and then continue this podcast. But my first reaction was, I can't believe it. It's almost apocalyptic. Yeah. Was, Very apocalyptic. Um, yeah. I, 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 it was, yeah, in, incredible. And I, the thing is, I had um, friends of mine who actually fought in that war. Um, and I, I was like, because I, I knew a couple of friends that um, uh, left school and, and, and joined the army. And I thought, well, what's going to happen to them now? Am I, am I not going to see them for like five years now? You know, or am I I'm not going to see them for 10 years? Are they all going to be stationed in Afghanistan? So it was it was a really a rude away thing, and the the other thing I also remember was the response of the Australians basically um, begging um, people, not uh, our government, John Howard at the time, um, not wanting to go to war. I think ninety nine point nine of percent of Australians literally said no to war. Don't go to war. This is a dumb war that we're getting involved with. So yeah, that was- I remember the protests. So I think I might just have some footage right now of of the World Trade Center right now on Ground Zero. Just you know, keep talking amongst yourselves. I'll see if I can bring that up onto my screen. So just bear with me. Yeah, I think I have another question, which I know we've answered, but let's get it out there anyway. Watching this unfold, what were you thinking or, or feeling? And I, I think I remember feeling, as I said, apocalyptic it was scary it was frightening you couldn't even utter a word it was just painful and tears streaming down my face I was crying I was shocked I was numb what were you thinking or feeling oh um I was thinking what's the next move that's that's what I was thinking because I knew that America is very vengeful and that America is very trigger happy and I also wondered okay what, what is this going to mean for all of America's allies? Um, you know, it, it, is it going to be a, um, a, a system where you're all either with, with us or against us? Okay. And so I've just got some uh, video footage of the World Trade Center area right now. I'm just going to put this live on the screen right now. I'm not sure if you can see this. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So this is actually live footage of the World trade center right now at 4 53 a.m if we can just take a minute silence just to pay our respects i think that'll be incredible yeah isn't that a beautiful sight that's crazy that's and you should thank earth cam for this uh for that footage right there that we're seeing right now thank you earth cam 
I'm I'm emotional. I, I I'm trying not to cry. I mean, you can you you can't say anything apart from the buildings, but you can feel, feel a lot the of the sadness that's coming from that. You know, it, it it's absolutely amazing. So it's quite overwhelming. Really. Yeah, I'm I'm trying so hard not to cry. I mean, you know, it goes to show. Great, now I'm crying. Um, it goes to show how lucky we are mm. to have mm. each other, to be in this beautiful country. And, you know, to see so many lives lost. I mean, families who kiss their, you know, each other goodbye for the last time, not knowing they'll never return home. Friends, you know, not being able to call and find out where their loved ones are. And it, it's just oh, my heart. Actually, it's 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 quite an amazing thing, really, because I remember that even though even if you weren't um, living in America when that was happening. And even if you weren't in New York, uh, like I, I've, I heard of friends of mine um, that were living in other countries um, that basically could no longer get on a plane because they were afraid of what would happen on September 11th. Um, they were just, they, they just had a fear of heights all of a sudden. Um, and it, that was a very- I think they would have had a fear of flying as well at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Because like, you can't prepare. Well, yeah, I don't know how anybody could possibly prepare for something like that. I mean, for the longest time, I'd only ever been on a plane at that point twice in my life. I went to uh, Surpus and then went and I came back, and then then that happened, and it was like seven years uh, before I even hopped on another plane. Mm. <clears throat> it's really by you, the security, by you. One thing that did happen, that was a good thing that happened after this event, was the security. The security was uh, improved tenfold. Now you you wouldn't be able to get it. You wouldn't have been able to get away with any of this. No, this no, would this probably wouldn't have happened. You know, had the secure. To be honest, I don't know. I don't. To be honest, I I'm just I'm just not sure. You know, if um <laughs> if the security. I'm always thinking, right? If the security security was a lot stronger then, I, I think uh, than it was Australia, now. They really amped it up in Australia when that happened. Oh, uh, didn't I did. No, yes. They, um, they, they also okay. did. They also did in the UK as well. I, like I said, I've been to the UK and I knew how strict the security um, was over there in the UK. Even because, like, my trip was by Singapore, and even they were strict. They were real strict, man. I nearly got st- I nearly got stopped at Singapore Airport one time because obviously you're supposed to take off all the medals and stuff and put it through. And I walked through and the thing went off and I realized I left my phone in my pocket. So I stepped back through there, put the phone back through the machine, then walked through and I was given the all clear. But it's a wake up call, man. I actually remember in um, a, a Sydney Airport, um, the uh, international, where basically they put me in this plastic dome thing with one security guard and they literally, because I was dressed in a suit, um, they literally said, okay, hold up your hands, whatever. We're going to search you. That's dome. You mean like the bloody cone of silence thing like they used to get smart? <laughs> no, it was like, they had like two doors on it, right? And I remember um, uh, when I went to, um, I think it was Fiji I went to at the time. Um, it was like a couple of years after um, September 11th. But when I went there, um it was, yeah, it, it, I, that was like this, this new technology that they just brought in because of September 11th, um, where they had, um, they, they would basically, you know, section you off from the rest of the public kind of thing. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, um, it was like glass or, or plastic or whatever, or like hard plastic, that you, so you couldn't break through, but you couldn't move from a singular spot or so you couldn't run kind of thing and they'd you know pad you down and see if everything you've got any tools and they would say all oh, right i recognize that thing now yeah yeah and the, i recognize, the, I recognize they, where you're going with that thing now yeah so they said like do you have anything that we that we should know about and i said no i don't think so and then i said well hang on let me just check if i've got anything anything metal in my pockets um you know uh and i, and I checked you know and they, they said no there's nothing on me and then they checked me and i did and they'd let me go and whatever but i i just remember that they just amped up the security like like that kind of thing um 
you know, just after September 11th. That was one of the things that they, they poured all this money into because they didn't want the same thing happening to Australia. Yeah, now, that's right. Now, my next question is, do you feel more safer now than that time? Yes or no? Um, hard to say, to, to be honest, because Australia has been involved in a few wars. Um, I don't want to have to mention the whole COVID thing because that's really scared the hell out of me. But um, as far as domestic terrorism is concerned, I think I'm a bit safer, to be honest, because um, I know the lengths that uh, ASIO go to um, to protect Australia from domestic and international terrorism. Um, so, so, like, you, you really got to give the federal police a, a clap for that and all the other, um, um, you know, services that Australia does have to protect us from um, enemies from domestic and overseas. So I guess I'm not as afraid of domestic terrorism in Australia than I would be, say, in London. In London, I'd be scared. I'd be really scared. Um, like, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, I, I had a friend of mine who basically said that there was, someone left a... Um, uh, a luggage bag, right? Um, and she told the conductor on the um, the train. And the minute that she said, look, someone's left their bag there, um, literally everyone just got off on their seat and then went to the next carriage and then just got off on the next carriage because um, English people take um, um, that kind of stuff really, really, really seriously. They're really afraid of that. Um, and um, but they're kind of used to that stuff. They're used to that stuff because they've had domestic terrorism with the IRA and other terrorist organizations as well. But in Australia, I don't think I'm really that afraid because um, I'm a multicultural person who's um, really don't I don't judge different faiths or different stuff like that. And I I I really don't have a hatred towards people's religions or cultures at all. So I, I, I never really felt um, the fear because I didn't, I, 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 I didn't see people as, um, I didn't see people as an enemy based off their religion at all. So I guess I don't really feel anything. Um, for me, I think it's, I think I feel more more safe in Australia than ever before because, you know in this country we are prepared for anything and everything and you know again we're not judgmental people I'm not a judgmental person I'm quite loving um and you know I think what makes us oh wow look at that right now we're seeing right now we're seeing a boat go across actually we're seeing two boats right now what uh well, one one the bottom right and one in the middle background so they so must we're seeing be two boats right now going across going across uh going across uh, the river right now maybe paying it's, the respects yeah. i don't I, I don't know but um that's that's absolutely that, that's that's a that's a good bit of footage that one that's you see some boats they're just casually just I crossing across the live as we speak yeah, all right you know anyway. uh, as i was saying i i feel much safer in australia because we're prepared for anything and everything and i'm not a judgmental person i think we're such a multicultural you know, uh, diversity country. We come from all walks of life and, you know, this stuff doesn't happen here. I mean, I don't mean to go out of context or anything, but or out of off track, but compared to what happened on January the 6th of this year, but I think um, I'm much blessed and I'm much safer mm. here than I've ever been before. What about you? Yeah, I definitely feel a lot, to be honest, I do feel a lot safer now because of the fact that, you know, after, even I hate to say it, but after this, after this, what happened 20 years ago, and they amped up security such a degree, it's almost, you could say it's almost impossible for something like this to slip through the cracks. So yeah. it's highly unlikely that you would, that you would ever see anything like this ever again. Hopefully, hopefully we learned from that mistake and uh, uh, hopefully it does never happen again, but I do feel a lot more secure, you know, in certain areas. There's still a lot of areas where I feel 
you know, um, how, what's that word right now? What's that word? Um, uh, nervous. I suppose that could be one word when I'm around a lot of people or whatever. But, um, but for the most part, I do feel a little bit more secure now because we learned our lesson uh, back then. And hopefully, I would like to think that, you know, we've, well, a lot of the countries around the world have learned from this as well. I think there's a question I wanted to ask, but I think I'll reword it basing it on the somber moment that that moment, I'm not here to offend anyone or upset anyone anger, but that moment when we saw it on TV, when they showed us the CCTV footage, why did they let those people onto the plane fully knowing what's about to happen? I mean, why don't, don't they usually put people go through a metal detector and they check and stuff? And well, Back then, I, I think that their, um, you know, their security wasn't as great. And, um, okay, so the, you, you've got a couple of conspiracy theories around this thing, which is a... Um, George W. Bush let them happen um, so they would basically take the planes and so he would have a genuine reason to basically attack any country that he wanted to. Um, the other reason is negligence. Um, you know, uh, back then, um, you know... I think the I mean, security was very lax back then. Yeah, and there's also things like, um, for example, everyone were talking about nuclear weapons back then and, and bombs and armies and stuff like that. And no one thought that, you know, to get on a plane and put it into um, the, you know, the Pentagon or even, or even the Twin, Twin Towers was, was going to happen. That No one ever saw that actually happening. Everyone thought if, if any war was to be fought, it would be fought with conventional weapons like machine guns or grenades or something like that. No one, no one saw that... Um, you know, a bunch of terrorists were going to hop on a plane with box cutters and and basically um, hold um, hold everyone um, hold everyone um, hostage with a bunch of box cutters. No one saw that. So I, I think the way that uh, America under underestimated guerrilla warfare and hand to hand combat and um, basically. Um, fell in love with their own um, invincibility kind of thing, really um, basically destroyed them because they didn't foresee um, um, how basically this, the simplest basic things like knives or box cutters or things that you can buy at Bunnings um, could become a real um, terrorist threat. Here's my next question, if you don't mind me asking, is... With technology then to technology now, what we know now, what we know now compared to what we didn't know then is could this have been avoided? Oh wow, could it have been avoided? Um I don't to be honest, I don't think it could have been avoided. I think uh, this was a wake-up call. This, this I've no doubt was a wake-up call uh because of the you know how we got complacent with, you know, our security. We thought everybody would have thought that they were untouchable, you know, that this could never happen. And when it did, um, that's when, I, that's when the security got beefed up and that's when technology really got ramped up, beefed up to uh, process more. I don't know. I don't know if the word is process more potential scenarios or, or what could have been done differently, I suppose. Um. I honestly think it, it it was just a matter of when, to be honest, because America had already invaded like so many countries, okay? Um, and to be honest, um, Afghanistan was just a hotspot waiting to happen. So even before September 11th, um, Afghanistan was um, basically effectively um, creating a hotel for uh, would-be terrorists that would either... Um, fight in mercenaries of their own who originally fought for the United States anyway um, or would basically um, fight for other armies that uh, employed them. So there, there were mercenaries that were already um, uh, had um, been trained by the US um, with American weapons that eventually just fought against the US. So it wasn't really a question of if, it was really a question of when 
And um, I guess the when was September 11th. I just think that, as you both said, I'm both on board with what you both said, which is, no, this couldn't have been avoided. But the thing is, it was foretold. It was foretold. Uh, well, I, I think it was, it was going to happen. Like, like, like I said, I, I think it was going to happen anyway. Whether or not it was going to happen with bin Laden, I'm not sure. Um, but if it wasn't going to happen with bin Laden, it probably would have happened with another terrorist organization that um, was out to kill America. Because like I said, America invaded a lot of countries. Okay, but this, this is now about what happened then. It's not about who invaded what. It's about... But that was, that was the reason, Kat. So the reason why this happened to begin with was because America invaded a lot of countries and they went after other countries for oil and other reasons. You know, but predominantly it was it was money based, and I think it was only a matter of time before someone got angry, and that this was to happen. And unfortunately, due to um, underfunding of um, you know, America's um, some security or border control, um, they got hit badly because of it. Do, what What do you think, Leon? Um. I, to be honest, I disagree with uh, some of the stuff that Buckets just said. It wasn't about, it, I don't think it was ever about oil. This was about, um, uh, what's the, well, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of a word here. Um, they got they got past the security. Yeah. The security, the security was lapsed on this particular day and this and it started at all. This was never about oil. This this was a uh, this was a, obviously it was a calculated attack. Well, that's no, that's no, that's not even an argument there because it certainly yeah, was yeah, a calculated yeah. attack. Otherwise, otherwise it would have been. Um, otherwise, yeah, it would have been just may may have stopped straight away. But it had happened in three different in three different areas. The three different three different air four different areas. And if you think about it, the trade centers one and two. There yeah. you go. You got the Pentagon. That's three, and the crash yeah. in the Pennsylvania. That's four. Now, this exposed the uh, the security lapse, the security lapses, and one of the first things they did was tighten that security. So, it's not like I don't think it's that like. Well, it could be likely to be more sophisticated. They have to be more sophisticated, but um, you won't see. And in, you shouldn't see in your lifetime or my lifetime now a, a situation like that happening on U.S. soil. My next question is, what were the effects of post 9-11? What do you think were the effects, Leo? Oh, post effects? Well, obviously, a lot of people, quite frankly, and please forgive me if I cross the line here, but a lot of people were pissed off at the Taliban, obviously, and whoever was organised, whoever organised this, a lot of people were pissed off about that, um, and then, and then, a, then, a lot of that turned when we when it was decided that we declare a war on terrorism, and then when after the weapons of mass destruction, we we changed we changed from the web uh, from the war on terrorism to a war on chemical weapons or you know the um, weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I, we I think... shifted from one to another, and that was the one thing that I was against, and a lot of people were against, and that caused a backlash. Not only did it cause a backlash amongst the people, because like originally with the war on terrorism, we were all for that. We were for the war on terrorism, not when they shifted and decided to go on, um, on the. Uh, uh, I keep forgetting the word. It keeps slipping my head. It's a jihad. No, 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 no. Jihad's not the word I'm looking for. Um, the rampage? The war on, That's because I, I, I was going to say it was a bit of a rampage, if you think about it, but... Uh, um, 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 uh, the word wasn't... Uh, the word that I was looking for wasn't rampage, but it was the war on terrorism. It was the uh, war, uh, chemical weapons that were up... The weapons of mass destruction, that was it. They were up to the weapons of mass destruction because the war on terrorism was... Uh, plateauing at the time, so they decided to change it to a war on terror, uh, war on uh, 
Oh God, it's just I keep slip, I keep like, work with it. Yeah, you know, it, it keeps slipping. It keeps slipping my mind, but that was the part of it that we didn't approve on because we approved on the one, we didn't approve on the other, and that's what that's why there was worldwide protests, and you would see that in the system of a down video called Boom, which was directed by, I think it was directed by Michael Moore, and what it did is covered the worldwide protests against this particular uh, part of the war. And a lot of people were against it, even like that involved, there was an incident involving the Dixie Chicks and Toby Keith. And they were, they were um, at each other because of their stance on the second part of this war. And even Australian band Kiss Chassis, they put out a video called Opinions Won't Keep You Warm at Night. Now, what had happened in that was it was an anti-war song. It turned into an anti-war video because it had um, a fake per, a fake George W. Bush and people dancing around them. Uh, and with George Michael's video, shoot it. Mm-hmm. Where they took the you-know-what and also um, Johnny Johnny Howard as well. So that that was the part that we didn't approve of. And those were three. And it basically cost all three of those guys their elections. Well, instead of George W. Bush, because you only get two terms and his two terms were over after this. So he could have done whatever the hell he wanted because he's not coming back after this. But as far as the other two, it cost them big time. Yeah, uh, here's my next question. Um, just, just before you go to your next question, um, one, one of the things I do actually remember that did change um, was the fact that there were all these trade agreements when that war happened. So George, George W. Bush said, if you fight with me, um, I'll give you a free trade agreement. So every country that decided to be an ally with America basically got a free trade agreement with America and because of that, um, um, Australia, Australia's economy went up. So that was one of the things I remembered that did happen as a result of September 11th, which was um, <coughs> all those allied nations um, like um, Australia, like England, um, you know, had all these free trade agreements. And I also remembered that um, Japan um, got its own army back. Um, when before they had no army, but all of a sudden they had soldiers from Japan um, in Iraq, which I thought was, was, was crazy because it was like, oh, hang on a minute. I thought the US took away your right to have an army after you lost in World War II. Um, but <coughs> now since the Iraq war has started, you're, you're allowed an army now. So there were a lot of um, changes to the world um, as far as economic changes, as far as uh, position of power changes, as far as um, military changes. Um, And a a lot of people made lots of money because of it. It may have been a really cruel and devastating um, war that just completely wiped out a nation but a lot of people made a lot of money from that war. A lot of people made a lot of money from that war. That was one of the things that I remember changed. Now, Um, my next question is, are we more prepared now than we were then? Yes or no? I think think we are. I think we're more prepared now because there's no way a slip up like that could happen again. Well, there's, there's, there should be very little chance, but uh, we probably shouldn't leave that to chance. We should always be, you know, upgrading our security all the time, you know, making sure that we haven't missed anything, even if it could be the most microscopical detail that we might have missed. We need to make sure that that doesn't happen. That kind of slip, that kind of micro slip in the defence doesn't happen. Well, we have uh, our intelligence um, that we have amongst the allies is usually shared towards our, to our friends. And so a lot of the time there is a greater um, sharing of information between the countries. So because of that invaluable information, um, the chances of um, 
another terrorist attack happening um, are pretty low or at least preventable before it becomes worse. Um, and, um, you know, I, I actually remember when I was working at the Bledisloe Cup for ANZ Stadium, um, there was actually a bomb that was placed about a metre away from my locker. Um, and um, I didn't actually know this and the public didn't know this until two years later. Um, was, but, was, this, was this like a, a, what do you call it, um, a, a be prepared kind of thing? Or was no, no, like no. A, it, was, it, it was a real it was a bomb. Real thing. It was a real bomb. There was someone planted a real bomb um, two two meters away from my locker, um, and they had to go get the bomb squad in. And they didn't bother telling the general public about it because they didn't want mass um, uh, franticness or anything like that. And they just defused the bomb, took it back to base, uh, studied it, tried to work out where it came from, and that was that was that. Um, but the reason why they were able to do that so quickly was because we had excellent training because the government put um, stacks of money into counterterrorism. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, like, again, we have excellent prevention, um, prevent, prevention of terrorist um, attacks in this country and many of the other countries as well, um, purely due down to the fact that... Um, I think it's September 11th said, well, no longer are the days that we, we fight all of our, our wars um, overseas. Um, we have to basically realise that there are going to be wars that we're going to be fighting on our, on our shores kind of thing. Now, the only thing I have to say about this is I agree with you both, um, but you held a stronger point, which is, we, which you both said, which is we are prepared now and we should keep preparing because even, as you said, even that, that slight slip, I mean, technology, we're in a world that technology advances faster than the speed of light compared to what it was in 2001 as technology was becoming more and more interesting, and more popular, is that we need to keep advancing. We need to keep growing. We need to keep Australia safe. We need to keep working. You know, You know, we need to keep, adapting and adjusting we need to keep seeing what we can do so this never happens on home soil um you know and if anything god bless the troops of the united states of america and of australia new zealand and the world for keeping us safe for protecting us and you know i think we need to we are prepared but we can't be prepared enough and that's the only thing i want to say about this um now should we add the events of September 11th as part of modern history as it's changed the world, Leo. Yes, definitely. We should let people make sure people remember what had happened and, uh, you know, and also, you know, remind them, remind them of what happened and how we responded. So we can better prepare ourselves in the future for the next generation to prepare themselves in the future. Buckets. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, I think no generation should really forget this because um, that was, I mean, we always teach our children about World War One, World War Two as the big um, things that happened in our, our lifetime and stuff like that. And that seems to take dominance over pretty much everything. But um, I really think that we shouldn't forget about what happened in September 11th because that one event changed the whole world in basically 24 hours um, about, um, uh, you know, what, what we, um, how, you know, how we basically see the world. Um, it basically changed the, um, it changed the map of where America goes. It changes um, why America fight the, the wars that it fights. It basically changed the, um, who's um, in our alliance, it changed uh, what, it actually changed what we're actually fighting for. Um, it, it changed, um, you know, why um, we had so many refugees coming in from Iraq to Australia. Um, it also, but also the other thing it did, it was it, it, it basically, basically made us um, appreciate and it also made us try to understand other religions more um, so we could work out, okay, um, who's a terrorist? 
and who's a Muslim. And it, I think, to be, to be honest, I think it kind of opened up um, and it tried to allow us to at least um, find the good in everyone as opposed to just singling out a religion and then calling them just terrorists based on what they believe. So I, I think that this is something that I think should be really taught um, to school children um, and also um, because it, it'll help us to understand where we are now because that one event changed the world in, in many different ways. I think as a Samba podcast, as a Samba event 20 years on, it should be part of modern history And it should be part of world modern history, not just one country or two or 10. It should be part of the modern world because this way we can at least remember them and keep remembering them and praying for them and, you know, and and reminding ourselves how lucky we are to be able to breathe and be alive and fortunate and blessings. And those who never got the chance left their worlds behind. Um, I think it should be part of part of modern agenda, modern history. Mm. And I think it'll be one, it'll be a sad, you know, sad history lesson in the world. I I think it's kind of important to also realise that that thing that happened in September 11th, um, apart from that plane that that entered the Pentagon, okay, that was legitimately an attack on the people. Like, unlike other wars where they basically attack military structures and things like that, and it's an attack on an army or a government. That was an attack on the people. They, um, they went after. They went after the symbolisms of America. Imagine what happened if they went after the Statue of Liberty. Well, it, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I, mean, I wonder. I wonder. You know, just putting it out there. I don't know, putting a random putting a random uh, line on this. Obviously, we did see the trade centers go down. We saw the Pentagon attacked. I wonder if that downed plane. What was going for that? I mean, I, there's, not, there's really not many landmarks, you know, not many real landmarks around. That could have been one of those landmarks that they could have went after. Well, I, 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 sure. I, I, okay. I, well, the thing is, I mean, like New York is so famous. Everyone knows it is the Big Apple. It's got um, yeah. Statue of Liberty in it, like you just mentioned. It, it's got a lot of landmarks in it. It's got um the rockefeller um, center and all of that it's got it's got a lot of famous things that that, that everyone knows about that everyone wants to visit um and i think maybe by taking the twin towers down um they wanted to just tell everyone that all these america was vulnerable yeah yeah, that yeah exactly that all these wonderful things that you think you have these symbols of america that you think you have we can just take them down in 30 seconds i would see as more of symbols of all yeah, symbols of democracy, of taking down democracy. And, you know, it left not just America, but it left the world vulnerable. Here's the word I'm looking for, vulnerable. It wasn't just America, it was the world that was vulnerable because we didn't know if it was going to happen again to us or to another country. So the world was left vulnerable. I, I, I think, do you know what the biggest symbol of, of hope that America had it wasn't, you know, the statues that they had or even the buildings that, that got blown up. It was really the ability for America to rebuild. That was the, the greatest symbol of hope that America actually had. Um, and yeah. even, an even greater symbol of that was, was the um, ability for all the nations that wanted to help out the United States fight whatever war that they were going through. Um, so I think, I mean, it's not probably like it wasn't a building per se, even though they, they turned the Twin Towers into a symbol itself. Um, I think the greatest symbol was the, the ability to pour out into the, the American people about um, how horrible that was and how we'll remember that day and um, how we basically live in hope and how um, um, that, even though it didn't happen to... Um, my family in particular, how that it still kind of, it, it reached us as a human to human. It resonated. Life. Yeah, I, I think that was the greatest symbol, to be perfectly honest. I think the only thing I want to say about this before we move on to the last question is that it made us all unite with America. It made us all unite with each other. The world reunited, came together. We stood side by side. All the hate stopped and 
the outpouring of love and compassion and empathy and prayer and solidarity and unity, the world stood its ground and the world paused and the world went quiet and you could, you know, we we were united. Earth was united. The world was united. And I think. Well, I, 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 I disagree with that because um, even though America's allies were united and America had a lot of allies. And I'm not talking about allies. But, I'm talking but, about. but there are a lot of people that still hated America. Okay. We're talking about when this happened, you're going too far. When this happened, the world united. Like we saw people, you know, reaching out. We saw people asking each other, you know, are you okay? I'm here for you. You know, people knocking on each other's doors, people checking in with people. The world united, okay? It's not just America, but we united together. And that's what I believe in compassion and unity and solidarity and peace and love and kindness. And that's that's what I think, what I meant by that is that the world stopped and united. I think you'll find a lot of the world, a lot of the world did unite with America, you know, is obviously the grieving process because there wasn't just Americans that died in those towers. There wasn't just Americans that died on those planes. They were from all over the world. You know, that um, people that died in there. I think we lost, how many did we lose? We, I think we lost, what, 10? I think we lost 10 Australians or something on that particular day or yeah. 100. I'm, I can't remember what the number, I can't remember what the number was in total, but we did lose people as well. Not just well, most of them were American, but a lot of their allies uh, did. They a lot of Americans' allies did lose people on that on that particular day, and that's why we were united with the United States uh, because of that. Now, my last question is: What lessons have we learned since then? Buckets. Um. Well, I want to say basically we learned not to go to war again, but that's not true, is it? Um, uh, what look, lessons did we really learn? Um, that's a really interesting, um, I, I guess, basically how to prevent um, terrorist attacks. That was one. Um, I think if, if anything, um, I, I think people um, valued not going to war. I think there was that one thing that, that, um, Australians uh, basically valued, which was not going to war. That before we had like this, um, you know, almost, um, you know, vengeful or excitement about going to war because we, we were taught about how, how um, awesome it is to go to war and how we as a country are moving towards going to war. But I think, um, to be honest, um, I think that one event, because it, it didn't kill a lot of soldiers, it predominantly killed civilians. I think that people kind of felt um, that they didn't want to go to war anymore. I think that people were kind of sick and tired of killing innocent civilians. And I think that was one of the things that made us go, okay, yes, it happened and it was terrible. Um, but we don't want other humans to die. We don't want other civilians to die. And even though that actually happened in the end, because America went to war against Iraq, they went to war against Afghanistan and pretty much any other country that they deemed was a terrorist, um, we basically, as the world, were just sick and tired of um, civilians dying for basically no reason. But I think that was one of the things that changed, and that was one of the things we learned. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if governments basically learned from that themselves, but certainly a lot of people around the world didn't see war as this comical things where people just get up again and um, after the ending credits. I think that's one of the things that we, we learned, and I, I think uh, one of the things that, and I remember this because I was studying. Um, uh, case management at the time was that more and more people um, started to get into social work um, type courses more than ever before um, as opposed to say um, engineering or before because we re because people started to become more empathetic of other people 
and they wanted to live their lives in an empathetic ways in, in order to understand people and their needs. That was one of the things I actually, that, that we did, I think, as Australians learn. Um, but um, whether it, it'll stop wars in the future, I, I don't know. I can't really, really say. But um, I think that we, we, we all got a, a, a real taste of uh, what, it, what it means to basically lose real lives as opposed to people who are trained to fight. The thing I want to say about this, and I'll pass it on to Leon for the last last segment, is that what I think we learn now, well, what we're learning now, or what we learn now compared to then, on the somber occasion, is we learn empathy, we learn kindness and compassion, we learn love, we learn we learn to unify, we learn solidarity, we learn peace, we learn prayer, we learn to lean, we learn how to lean on each other, support each other, be there for each other, and be thankful for all the miracles and the blessings and the gifts of life for every breath of life for our families and our friends. And that's why I think the world learned what, that's what we all learned. And we are still striving to learn that every day. And that's, that's the only thing I'll say about that. Leon. It's I boring. think one thing that we did learn uh, was that we were complacent. We, there was some parts that we thought we were prepared for, but we weren't prepared. I think we were complacent. And it was exposed. And these terrorists took advantage of that. And that was the that was the gap in our security that we needed tightening. And we did tighten that security. So hopefully we have learned we have learned that. And hopefully nothing like this ever happens again in the future. I know it did I know it did in the UK. That was the uh I think it was the 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 bus bombings, I think it was in the United Kingdom, that was a bus. So that part of public transport, you know, may have uh, got lax, um, but they tightened up the plane. So it was a lot harder to even come, come close to doing something like this. So I think what we did learn was we were complacent in our security. I agree. I agree. Last words? Um. Yeah, my last words is that um, I'm I, I'm sorry for anyone that's lost their lives. Um, I'm sorry for the families that have had to suffer um, if you've lost any families due to September 11th. And um, nothing can take away your lost loved ones that um, you've been with. And as long as you uh, think of um, them every single day. Um, they don't never really die with, within you. And I, you know, from all of us on behalf of Cat Space, myself and Buckets, Leon and Horsey, again, we are quite sorrowful for your loss. We are quite sorry for your loss. We feel your pain and sadness. I know 20 years is a long time, but please be assured that our love and thoughts and prayers are with all of you. May they rest in eternal peace and light and may their memories Oh God, I'm going to cry. May their memories live on. Um, may their stories live on. They are heroes. Uh, they are brothers, uncles, grandsons, nephews, cousins, you know, uh, best friends, next door neighbours, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, nieces, you know, wives, husbands. Um, as we reflect on a dawn of a new day, uh, in America, we're looking at New York City is at almost 20 to 6 in the morning. Um, and we are here about almost uh, quarter to eight at night, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, America. It was great that, we're, that there is at least uh, a camera around, uh, it just happened to be on Earth Cam, that we're actually able to get this particular footage and see this. Thank you, and Earth see, Cam. And we're right now seeing, well, we're starting to see. Uh, a little bit of the sunrise in America mm. right now. You look on the far uh, west of the screen yeah. right now. You if you notice, there's the a sunrise in the west. If you notice, you can see a little bit of where there's a building back there. And you can see the blue blue lights along the the water. That's absolutely glorious. The water just shines. It feels like a you know somber day, but America, the world is with you. Australia is with you. We unite. Pay respects. Um, should we have a minute silence or should we play a song to take us out, Leon? What do you think? 
I, I think we should go with a minute silence and see and just say people to see what we're seeing right now in the World Trade Center. Right, what we're seeing right now in the camera in New York City. Okay. Well, that was that quite was, overwhelming. Yeah, I started to tear up and I had goosebumps all over me. God bless us all. God keep us all safe. And once again, no words, but let us reflect on being thankful that we're alive. Thank you, Leon, so much for joining us on this Samba 20th anniversary <clears throat> on 9-11. Thank you, Buckets, for, for being here. No problems. And uh, if you like what you see, please let us know in the comments below. Subscribe, push the notification bell, and invite your friends. And God bless you all. <clears throat> please stay safe. Take care of each other. Love each other. Be kind to one another. Check in on your friends and family. God bless our troops. Keep them all safe around the world. And God bless planet Earth, I can say. All right, no worries. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye.